ever wanted to use AI in your make.com automations? In this video, we're showing you exactly how to do that, going over a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can connect OpenAI to your make account and how to supercharge your automations using assistance. Automations by themselves are an extremely powerful tool that you need to have in your agency, but integrating AI within your automation literally supercharges them to the next level. It's like ice cream. On its own, it's delicious, but if you get some fresh, warm cookie dough and add it to the ice cream, it's 10 times better. I've made some the tutorials in the past for Zapier connections. However, as Make.com is becoming more and more popular in the agency space, I thought I might as well record these again for Make. If you're new here, you'll soon find out we don't hold anything back. So be ready to get a full tutorial to a massive problem in your life from a random guy on YouTube. Let's get straight into it. All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can connect ChatGPT to your Make.com account to actually use AI in your automations. There's two main things I'm going to be covering. Firstly, is how to actually connect OpenAI to Make.com. And secondly, I'm going to be going over how you can actually create and use assistance and make.com. Both of these are essential things that you need if you want to start using AI within your agency. So think of this as a free tutorial going over exactly how to do those things. I don't waste any more of your time, so let's get straight into it. The first thing we're going to be looking at is connecting OpenAI to Make. Now, if you don't already know, this is how you can actually connect AI to your make.com. There are obviously different providers, but ChatGPT and OpenAI are the main ones. If you don't know, OpenAI is basically just a backend to ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is the package version that you have and you're probably most familiar with. OpenAI is basically just what developers use to use the power of ChatGPT within their own applications. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So the first thing we want to do is head over to OpenAI.com, create an account. Then we're going to get that API key and insert it in make.com. So let's go ahead and do that. Once you open up OpenAI.com, all you're going to want to do is head over to the top right hand side where it says login. And here, if you don't have an account, you'll have to log in first or create an account. Once you do that, you'll see these two options. So either to go to ChatGPT or to open the API section. We're obviously going to go to the API side of things. If this is the first time exploring this platform, there's a lot you can see here. But main thing we're looking for is the API keys. So we're going to go back over to the left hand side menu and we're going to use API keys. Once you're in the API section, all we're going to go is press this little button here, create a new secret key. You can name wherever you want. I'm going to put YouTube test and leave it default and permissions and leave it as all. And then all you want to do is create the secret key. Here you want to have this key. Now you won't be able to view it again, so make sure you make a copy of it. I'm just going to leave this here for now. Now let's head over to make to actually integrate this API key. Once you're in make, I've got this test account here that I've been playing around with uh, specifically for YouTube. All you want to do is create a new scenario and we're just going to search for the chat GPT app or open AI. You can choose any one of these and now we're going to press create connection. And very, very simple, guys. All you want to do here is just paste the API key we got previously. And then we also need the organization ID. So if you go away from API keys, we move over to settings within OpenAI, go over to general, and you'll see your organization ID right there. So we're just going to copy that and once again, paste it right here. So now we're going to save this and it should connect automatically, just like that. Perfect. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of things you can choose here. Here you can enter your prom, images, the max number of tokens you want to use even the different models available, temperature, and the number of responses you actually want to generate. One thing I do want to make you guys aware of is the usage cost. Now, I don't know if it's still a case, but previously you had to actually load your account with some credits. So if you go over back to settings and then go to billing, you can see on this test account, I've got $8. Previously, there was a thing where we had to add $5 to actually use the account. I'm not sure if that's still a case, but you're probably wondering where does this $5 actually go to? And that goes to the different tokens, basically. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still extremely cheap. It doesn't really cost a lot. For example, I've been using this for a very, very long time, and I don't think I've spent more than $10 a month on these credits. I just want to make you aware of the different usage costs. So if you go to the OpenAI website, they break it down very, very clearly from the most expensive one, which is GPT Turbo, the cheapest one, which is GPT 3.5 Turbo. Like I said, guys, this is still extremely cheap, and it's not going to cost you a lot of money, but please, please be aware of this. You don't want to be surprised by invoice from OpenAI for no reason. All right, guys. So now that we've actually connected AI to your Make account, we move on to the second step, which is actually creating and using assistance in Make. Now, one thing a lot of people usually wonder is why am I even talking about assistance rather than just entering a prompt here every single time? And there's a lot of benefits, a lot of benefits to actually use assistance, which is why in everything that we do, we always use assistance rather than having a long, long, long set of prompts or a 500 word prompt that just takes up contact windows for no reason. There's three main reasons why we actually use assistance over longer prompts. Firstly is context. 
A key thing with assistance is that you can upload specific files like SOPs, like contracts, like even like video scripts, and the assistant can actually reference those files when responding to your answer. This gives us something that's very, very important in generating those better responses, which is context to specifically what it is you're talking about. So for example, if you have an assistant that produces your YouTube scripts, you can upload a file with all of the scripts that you've ever done from YouTube, and the assistant will actually reference those when creating the scripts. As you can imagine, this will create much better and specific answers to what you're looking for, which makes it much more powerful. Second benefit of actually using assistance is customized responses. Rather than having to set up a long prompt every single time you run an automation on ChatGPT, for example, you can just use the assistant API to call your assistant, which already has the customized functions in terms of how it responds, how it deals with questions, everything. Once again, the outcome here is just better responses on a consistent basis, which obviously is advantageous for you if you're gonna be using AI on a regular basis. And last, we have consistency. The key thing with assistance is that it focuses a lot on the context you produce it rather than all the information that AI usually has. As you can imagine, this will give you much more consistent results on a regular basis. So for example, we'll stick with YouTube. If you ask it to produce a script, rather than references the whole internet and everything it knows every single time it makes a script for your channel, it will use the context you uploaded of your previous scripts and use that as a guide, giving it much better responses specific to what you're looking for. It still can reference everything else, but it's going to prioritize using the context first, which is why it's able to provide you much more consistent results. When it comes to things like using AI in your automations, especially for repetitive processes, you're going to want consistent results. So those are the three main reasons why we always go with, with assistance when actually using AI within our automations. Now I'm going to talk you through how you can actually create it. So assistants are created in OpenAI. If we head back over to OpenAI, then head over to assistance, then on the top right hand side, press create assistance. Here you're able to start making your assistant. Well, here guys, there's a lot of things we want to change from the name, the instructions, actually assistant, which will be the key, the model you're going to use, any files you want to upload, or even add in their functionalities. There's a lot of things you can change, but if you're a beginner, this might seem a bit confusing. So I'll give you a top secret to make your life so much easier. It also saves me a lot of time when I'm creating these assistants. Assistants and GPTs are the exact same thing. The only difference is that assistants live on a back end and gpts live on a front end and chat gpt was kind enough to release the gpts to us back in 2023 but the key thing here is that they created some sort of gpt that actually helps us create gpts called gpt builder so if you're making an assistant for the first time first make a gpt anything you want this will guide you through how to do it and will set the parameters for you then once you've done it you're going to go over to the figure section you'll see a set of instructions here and all we're going to do is copy and paste that right into the assistant side of things to create your assistant for this example i'm going to create an assistant who is an expert at make.com his sole purpose is to help new people use the make.com and integrate it within their automations i'm going to speed this up while i make this assistant but you'll be able to see how easy it is to actually do this and then when they copy all of this and put it in the assistants and it'll be done and actually create an assistant let's get straight into it All right, guys, so I just finished actually creating the assistant. You probably saw it sped up. Now, if we go over to the configure section, you can see a bit of instructions here. Now, usually it does get longer than this. And if you want to create a really, really useful assistant, then keep on communicating with the GPT builder because it is really helpful. But just for this example, I'm going to copy this over and head back to the assistant section. And in the instructions, we're just going to paste this. Now, the model for this doesn't really matter. You can choose whatever you want. GPT-4 is the most expensive. As we saw earlier, GP Fuel Turbo is not that expensive. It's still quite fast, but it is more expensive than 3.5. I do think it gives you slightly better results, but it's not anything crazy. So if you want to save money and you're not doing anything too complicated, then go for GBT 3.5 Turbo. Now, this is the fun part where you actually get to upload files. Now, in this scenario, I've created a make.com assistant and knows everything about make. A file I could upload, for example, is all of the makes documentation or even a breakdown of the specific formulas that you need to use and make, something like that. Another example is if you're using this to create YouTube scripts, you can upload a file with all of the YouTube scripts. Or if you're using this for SOPs, you can upload a file with all your SOPs for your agency, something like that. Like I said, guys, the possibilities are really endless. And once you start playing around with these systems, you'll realize there's a lot you can do. For now, all I've done is go to me.com, to the documentation side of things, and just download this specific page. And I'll be uploading that. So it knows all of the different terminology, basically. 
So now if you head over back to OpenAI and we go to file search, what we're going to do is we're going to add a file and add this straight from your computer. So we're going to attach it and that's pretty much it. Now this assistant is ready, we're going to turn file search on and we'll leave it as that. There's a lot more you can play around with, such as the temperature, the diversity of actual responses, but for this example, we're going to leave it. So if you head over to playground, we can actually test this assistant now. As you can see, we have our instructions, our file search, and we can say create an automation to automate lead like this. And we're going to run it. And this is the response we've got. I'm really happy with the response. It's following my instructions and broken it down very, very clearly. I'm giving specific instructions for me. I'm sure if I were to say the exact same thing on a general assistant, which you know what, we're actually going to test this live. We're going to copy this exact same prompt, and now I'm going to say it just to a random assistant with the same exact thing. Let's see how different the responses are. As you can see, guys, the responses are drastically different and it doesn't even compare. So, guys, please, 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 when you're using AI when you automations, create assistance, you'll get better responses. But now we've actually created an assistant using that little secret I showed you. It's time we actually need to connect it to make. Now, for this, all we're going to do is head back over to make. We're going to choose a new scenario with OpenAI. And here we're going to scroll down until we find conversation with assistant or message an assistant. Here we want to connect it again. Your OpenAI account will already be connected because you did it in the previous step. And here, all you want to do is choose your assistant. We didn't name our assistant, which you should have. So if you go back now to give it a name, we'll call it the Make Assistant. We save that. Now, if we reload this, we should see it here. Perfect, Make Assistant. And that's it. You just type your message and it'll come up with a perfect response. Now you're actually able to use the assistant you just created a second ago within your automations. And that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. Please like and subscribe now that you have the power to actually use AI within your automations. This is just the start of your AI journey, especially within automation. So if you want more information on how you can actually use and create AI-powered automation within your agency, check out this video in the top right-hand corner. This is a complete guide on the different ways you can use AI. As you can see here, if you go back to ChatGPT, you can see all these different options. Images, transcription, audio. There's a lot you can do. In this video, I'll break up the top three things that you could focus on when using assistance. Now, I will say that this is set on Zapier, but it doesn't really matter. It is fairly similar. But if you really, really want me to record another video like this, specifically for Make, I will do it. Drop a comment below and I'll get it done for you guys. If you haven't already, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We're we'll dropping tutorials like this and insights every single week. I can guarantee there's no one else out there on YouTube giving away this much value for free. If you've watched until the end, you're obviously interested in how you can actually use automation within your agency. So if you want to learn a bit more and get access to this 20 plus page document, so breaking down exactly how you can set up a skill proof agency, all you have to do is fill out the short form below. It takes about five minutes and from that, You'll get access to the document, you'll get your onboarding process fully customized and optimized, get your client journey improved based on your specific pain points, and you'll also get five different automation examples with step-by-step -step guides on how you can actually set them up by yourself. It's an extremely valuable lead magnet, and its pure aim is to give you insight on the different things you can do in your agency using automation, as well as setting up the skill-proof systems that you need at scale and lastly guys if you want to save 100 hours a month for this scalable system now i like to take on more clients without ruining your service delivery or profit margins you can check out the third link in the description access this free training this basically just breaks down exactly what it is that we do we had a lot of questions on instagram over the past month so we put together this free training those of you that are wondering what we do and how you can actually work with us now we'll see that this is not for everyone so if you're not at that stage yet we need to actually optimize your operations then I would recommend signing up. But don't worry, if that's not you, you keep on using these tutorials to your advantage because they're insanely valuable and we literally give away everything for free. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was a pleasure recording this video. I've been using both Make and Zapier for a very long time. And honestly, I'm kind of divided between the two. I definitely feel like you can do a lot more with Make and it is slightly cheaper. But the reason I do use Zapier for a lot of the tutorials I do on the channel is because it is a bit more beginner friendly. However, if this video gets a bit more popular, then I'll take it as a sign to maybe start using Make within different tutorials because it is growing a lot more, especially since the start of 2024. I've been seeing it a lot more. So yeah, guys, let me know which one you guys prefer, Zapier or Make. And depending on what the comments say, I'll use that for future tutorials. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was a pleasure recording this video and I'll catch you in the next one.